In this breakdown, we have a triple play for you, three plays from a single match. And in this one episode, we're gonna discuss an around the post, gap assignments, anticipating your opponent's shots, and a third shot drive. And oh yeah, Alex goes head to head with Ben Johns. Buckle up, it's time to break it down. Here's how this works. You send us highlights, great plays, good plays, and not so good plays. With the help of Coach Alex Fox, we break it down. You learn, we watch, and we all get better. This is Pickleball Breakdown. All right, Alex, the first of three plays from this group in Orlando, Florida. And on this first one, we're going to focus on Mark on the near court on the left-hand side and Patricio there on the far court on the right-hand side. Mark is sent wide to his left, sends a cross-court shot to Patricio, and sets up a pretty as you please around the post. I'm pretty sure that's not what Mark had in mind. So when Mark gets pulled all the way wide here, I would have liked to see him do a, a reset dink there in the middle rather than go pull it all the way back cross-court at such a sharp angle. Um, it's really just a, a cakewalk ATP at that point. Although, the next court is like two and a half feet away, so <laughs> that's some uh, pretty uh, skilled maneuvering that's there to get that in between the posts. That's target shooting right there by, by Patricio. That's really good. Mark actually hits it pretty good cross court. He does go way wide. I usually just drive it into my nearest opponent. Well, Mark actually probably had an ATP himself there, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Like, you coach that a lot. I do, yeah. So the ATP, the around the post, is uh, that opportunity actually presents itself a lot more than people realize, just due to a lack of patience, really. Um, they just don't wait long enough. But if you let that ball carry, especially if you have top spin uh, coming from your opponent that's taking you out wide, um, just let that ball travel. And, and if it's not there and you wait it out, you can always just dink it back. You don't have to be committed. Just because you let that ball get low, you, you can still play a dink. There, there's, there's no commitment involved. But I, I like to see uh, when players let that ride out and, and at least see it through to see if it's there. So Mark misses the opportunity for the ATP and he sets up Patricio and one and Patricio did it perfect. One thing that I want to point out here though is there's a couple things here with partner movement. Uh, and kind of working as a, as a tan. Look at the hole. Look at the gap between Mark and David right here. I'm a truck driver by trade. I could drive my <laughs> semi truck right through that thing. So he needs to come back. He being David needs to come back and follow Mark a little bit more over towards the left side of the court to close that gap a little bit. And that being said, he would need to go all the way back over again. Yeah. But that just goes to show again, the right play here, I think would have been for Mark to do that reset dink in the middle. That way there's not as much shifting going on and not as much gap created. All right, we got another point from the same foursome, so let's go to that one. This next play is interesting, not because it has a lot of action in it, but because, once again, Patricio demonstrates his accuracy acumen. It sure doesn't look like Mark and David have a very big gap there in the middle, but Patricio finds it right there. What went wrong for Mark and David on this play? If I were to guess, I think David moved backwards because he was expecting an attack from Patricio, which is smart. You want to give yourself time in those kind of situations, but what should have happened, I would have liked to see Mark move over towards the middle a little bit and get back at least to where uh, David is there and and probably a little farther back even so he's able to, to cover that middle and go behind David a little bit, kind of playing back up. But what he does, if you look at his feet here, like we've talked about before, the ball is cross court at Patricio from Mark and Mark is parallel with the kitchen line. He should be facing and, and like squared up to the ball. But in this stance, the, the ball is gonna be able to get behind him, which it does here. So if he was squared up to the ball, he would have been a lot better off. So this is like some pretty heady stuff when you talk about not only do you have to anticipate what Patricio is going to do with that ball, which expect the fastball first and foremost, always do that. And that puts you in a good position. But then you've got to read what your partner's doing at the same time and then react to what they're doing. So because David took that step back, now you're saying Mark's got to think about what is Patricio going to do? What is my partner doing and where do I need to be? 
you need to anticipate what your opponent's moves are, what they're likely to do, and what they have available to them. In this situation, Mark's posture is suggesting that he needs to be worried about his line or, or a ball hit directly at him. In reality, he needs to be worried about that middle because David over here, he's having to worry about, well, what if Patricio rips this ball down my sideline? Because he that's his assignment. He's got to cover that. The far sideline over on Mark's side should be kind of abandoned here, and he needs to cover that gap and fill that middle. Okay, so that point goes to Patricio and Jonathan. Uh, we have one more play from this foursome. Let's go to that one. Okay, so this one, this is actually quite a short point that Mark right there puts it right into the net. So what I like about this is the way Patricio attacked this ball. There's a couple things I want to point out here. One, the return of serve from Mark had backspin. What I like about driving a ball with backspin is that spin is going to keep your ball down and in the court. So you need to aim a little bit higher uh, over the net to make sure you're not, you're not hitting into the net, but it's gonna keep you in the court. That spin's gonna continue working for you because that backspin that your opponent gives you is gonna equal double the amount basically of topspin that you're able to get. So really good ball to drive. It was something that he was able to step into. The second thing I like about that decision is that it was the person who was in transition if you see, Mark is forced to hit that ball on the move, and that's always going to be a more difficult shot. So I always like to exploit that when possible. The third thing I like about that decision is that not only was Mark on the move there, but it was the player straight across from Patricio setting up what could have been a poach for him off of that drive. Mark takes a look at his paddle there. <laughs> Just not going to go there because it's a Prince paddle. You know what? It's not the pet. No. <laughs> it's not the paddle mark, no. It was it was really just smart play by Patricio because of all the things you just talked about. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, coach, I, that was one of the first things you told me when you started coaching me. And to this day, when I don't do that, I hear you in my head, 70% drive to the person who's on the move. Hey, well, something's working. That's good to hear. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, in all three of these plays, wow, uh, Patricio really shown brightly. MVP right there, there Patricio.